Hi, I'm Sister Vasa, and I'm having my coffee before going to work today in Vienna, in Austria. But I should immediately tell you what happened last week. As my zillions and zillions of viewers will know, the doorbell mysteriously rang at the end of our show last week. Hello? Grüß Gott, Post Okay. So, that was last week. I got these two letters, and intriguingly, by special delivery. Actually, the first letter was nothing interesting. It's from some woman named Oprah, asking me for an interview again. I've already told her that I have a show to run here, but apparently she doesn't understand what it means to have zillions and zillions of viewers. But what can you do? The next letter, on the other hand, is very interesting. It's from a viewer named Sergius from Alaska, and he asks us to reflect on the life of his saint that is going to be celebrated this upcoming week on October 7th, together with Saint Bacchus. So, because he went through all this trouble, I say happy name day to the viewer from Alaska named Sergius, and I will be reflecting on the life of these saints in our show today. Saints Sergius and Bacchus held high military positions and were trusted powerful counselors at the court of the Roman Emperor at the end of the 3rd or beginning of the 4th century. The exact dating of their lives is uncertain. Sergius and Bacchus were friends and shared a common faith. They were both Christians, but in secret, because the pagan Roman authorities at this time considered it an act of treason to be a faithful Christian. To be more exact, they considered it an act of treason to refuse to take part in pagan religious rituals. The Romans, you see, believed that one unified religious practice ensured the stability of one unified government or empire. So the Romans didn't care all that much what you believed in, but they cared how you behaved ritually. So Sergius and Bacchus were reported one day to the emperor, it was reported to him that they were Christians, by someone who was jealous of their power and position at the imperial court. First the emperor and his minions tried to persuade Sergius and Bacchus to change their behavior to offer sacrifice to the idols. But when they refused, he had them tortured and tried to humiliate them in various ways. For example, the emperor had them led through the city with chains around their necks and dressed in women's clothing. When this didn't work, he sent them off to an area called Mesopotamia in the eastern part of Syria. Mesopotamia indicated here by the red arrow, means literally between rivers. It is the area between the rivers Tigris and Euphrates, and today it corresponds to modern-day Iraq, the northeastern section of Syria, and much smaller bits of other surrounding countries. Most of you will know that as we speak today, the Christians in this area endure unimaginable suffering. The governor of this area was named Antioch, and he knew Sergius and Bacchus. In fact, they were his benefactors. He received his high position of governor of this area upon their recommendation. So he tried to persuade them at first to sacrifice to the idols. And when he failed, he finally first had St. Bacchus put to death. St. Bacchus was beaten to death in the ancient city of Barbalissos, which was located near Lake Assad, which forms a part of the river Euphrates, indicated here on a map of modern-day Syria with the red circle and arrow. After St. Bacchus's death, he appeared to his friend Sergius in prison and encouraged him to remain strong in his faith. 
St. Sergius was forced after this to march to another town named Resafa, wearing boots that had upturned nails fastened to the soles. And in this town, having reached Resafa, he was finally beheaded. This town Resafa, which was located southwest of the city of Ar-Raqqa, indicated here with the yellow circle and arrow, actually became the most important pilgrimage center in the east by the early 5th century. The town was renamed Sergiopolis in honor of the martyr St. Sergius. You can see the remains of the huge basilica built here in the early 5th century in honor of the Saints Sergius and Bacchus. In fact, these saints became very popular in both East and West. In Rome, for example, by the 9th century, we know that there were at least four churches or oratories in honor of these two saints. There are two things in this story I'd like to talk about. One is pain, and the other is friendship or fellowship. First of all, about pain. Saints Sergius and Bacchus, in addition to the physical torture they endured, endured emotional pain. Because of jealousy, they endured the loss of their high position in Roman society. They were subject to public humiliation, being paraded around the city wearing women's clothing. But they did not run from pain or suffering. They did not seek out the pain, that is true, but when the time came, they took it on. In fact, they accepted it as a gift, in a way that may seem to us bizarre and even incomprehensible. We don't readily see pain as a gift. It is true that most of us do not experience the extreme physical and emotional pain endured by these martyrs. But emotional pain, sometimes just in small doses, is something we are all given from time to time. And this can, in fact, be a gift. Whether it is a small pang of pain, like when somebody doesn't say hello to us in the hallway or ignores us when just yesterday they were very nice to us, when our husband is inattentive to us or our girlfriend behaves like a maniac, or something even more difficult like the loss of a job, an unsuccessful interview, a failed exam, the loss of a loved one, heartbreak when we are dumped, whatever. Pain in small or big doses, whether we notice it or not, brings us to a crossroads a crisis or crucial moment of sorts where we must make decisions about the directions of our lives. We can constantly run from pain on the one hand and avoid it in various ways through distractions like computer games, shopping, or even alcohol and other drugs. These are options we have on a daily basis. But we also have the option of not running from the pain, of addressing the pain, Addressing this pain means getting very quiet in faith and prayer and humility and taking up the cross. As Christ says to us so emphatically in the Gospel, whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Again, we do have the choice of not taking up the cross. We are free. We have the option of not allowing ourselves to feel emotional pain through some distraction or drug of our choice. We can, if we choose to follow this path, turn into hardened, cynical people with lifeless eyes, no interest in anything, and no ability to be a true friend to anyone. The martyrs Sergius and Bacchus made a different decision. They did take up their cross, their pain, but they also encouraged each other in this process, demonstrating the power of friendship or fellowship in this business of cross-carrying. You see, we don't do this alone when we have the humility to reach out to others, because humility makes cross-carrying easy. As Christ says in the Gospel, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That's it for today. Saint Sergius and Bacchus, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.